All right, Vikings fans, welcome back to another edition of On the Line, and we have a fan favorite here from the early 2000s. It's Jermaine Wiggins, who's currently a host on sports radio in the Boston area, does a lot of stuff for the Patriots down there. How's it going, Jermaine? I'm doing well. How's everything? Everything's going well. We were just talking before the show, and when you were here with the Vikings, it was a little different. You were at the old facility over at Winter Park, and you obviously had your training camps out in Mankato. So kind of talk about your time. It was under Mike Tice when you came in in 2004. Talk about your time with the Vikings. You know, it was a good experience for me. Uh, You know, for me, it was like my first opportunity to really uh, get a chance to showcase my skill set um, and what I could do on the on the football field as far as in the passing game, I, uh, you know, following uh, Byron Chamberlain, who had a pretty uh, pretty good stint in Minnesota, and was able to catch some footballs. Uh, it was it was an exciting time, you know, to be teammates with Dante Culpepper, Randy Moss, uh, Nate Burleson, uh, uh, some very talented players. So, um, you know, those were good old days. You know, had some some successful seasons over there, made the playoffs and you know, got the opportunity to make some plays in the process. Yeah, you had 705 yards in 2004, a big part of that offense with the Vikings, obviously alongside Randy Moss. Nate Burleson was a partner of yours on a show that you guys used to do back in the locker room back in the day. Can you? Obviously, he's made it big since then, and so have you. So talk a little bit about that experience um, during that season. Yeah, we, we used to do like a little video kind of show for the news i mean call like a video podcast or whatever you want to call it where we go around the locker room and you know we'd ask guys like you know just random fun questions and you know favorite movie who was their favorite you know rapper we'd have guys rap on on video so it was like it was a good time you know it was a good way to keep things light in the locker room and made um you know, obviously knowing Nate, he has a great personality, uh, um, and he was a great teammate. But just, you know, when you think about what he's been able to do uh, after his playing career, you see him doing a lot of different things. So it was kind of like, it was just like that, and we were able to really just have fun with a lot of different players and, you know, go around and, and, and make guys feel comfortable and, you know, talk a little trash, clown on some players here and there, and just have a good time, keep that good good team locker room vibe feeling good so now we are about a week away from the vikings opening up training camp here at the at the brand new tco performance center what do you see from this vikings team this year obviously you have a lot going on with the offense and you were a tight end so if you could talk about the the tight end situation with the vikings well i mean you got two guys that you we know one's a really good player in the in the pros we've seen what Kyle Rudolph's been able to do. And, you know, there was a, you know, a lot of conversation about him before the draft about possibly being traded, you know, even up here in New England with Rob Gronkowski kind of hanging the cleats up, you know, there were reports, could he be coming to New England? So he signs back with Minnesota and, and, you know, that's always a good thing when you can have a guy come back and you know what he can bring to the table, a good security blanket for uh, Kirk Cousins. And, and when you look at Irv Smith, who's out of Alabama, another guy that you look at can do a lot of different things, can move them all, move them all around the football field. We've seen him do that at the, the college level. He'll get an opportunity. And it's a little bit easier when you're able to play alongside a guy. Uh, when I was in Minnesota, I was able to play alongside Jimmy Klein. So of course. Made things a little made things a little bit easier uh, for me because you have to prepare for both both players, and I think that's what uh, they're going to have to do, you know, opposing defenses. They're going to have to prepare for not only Kyle Rudolph, but, you know, when you have the opportunity uh, to play with some talented receivers and Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen, it just makes makes your, your job as a tight end, you know, uh, that much easier. I, mean, I was fortunate and blessed to play with Randy Moss, so... I mean, it, he made things so much easy. You know, he, you know, you knew where coverage was going to go. Coverage, was, he was going to get doubled and tripled at times. And, you know, a lot of the times, it was one on one. And if you beat your man, you had a good opportunity to catch a ball, and make some plays. I'm going to put you on the spot here. What are you expecting from the Vikings this year? What do you expect from this new offense and obviously the defense that has been good for so long? When you look at what they have, and you look at the addition of Kirk Cousins and what he's been able to do. Uh, um, and then you talk about the weapons that we just talked about. And defensively, they've always been good. They've had some tremendous players on the defensive side of the football. Here's a team that should 
be competing uh, in the NFC for 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 being one of those teams that should be playing in the NFC Championship, uh, just based on the talent alone. But we all know it's more than that. But when you look at what they are on paper, they're a team that you look at them and you go, oh, they should be a team that should be right up in there, you know, one or two seed in the NFC and competing uh, to be playing in the in the NFC Championship game, if not the Super Bowl. Well, you won a Super Bowl yourself with the New England Patriots back in the day. Can you talk a little bit about that experience and what it takes for a team to win that big game? Well, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, is if you're fortunate enough to get to that position, and every game is critical, every game counts, but once you get there and you're fortunate to be in that position and understand that, you know, you, you know it's bigger than any game that you've ever played, uh, but you can't, you can't let the moment overtake you and I think that's the biggest thing and you know that was one thing why we were so successful uh you know in that Super Bowl because we didn't let the moment overtake us we knew what the moment meant but we focused on it and we prepared for it like it was just any other game and that's the biggest thing that you can do is make sure you look at that game like it's just another game um and and do what got you there you know pay attention to details as a player you know take care of the little things and you'll be fine my last question for you, in your time with the Vikings, those three seasons, give me your favorite memory coming up with that team. Uh, I would say my favorite m- memory, uh, it, I want to say it was New Orleans maybe. We played down in, the, uh, in New Orleans, and I had a, a bunch of memories. And it was a uh, pass that I think it was uh, Culpepper through the Moss, like a 50-yard bomb in the back of the end zone, and Moss just – an unbelievable catch. He made it, got two feet in bounds. It looked like he had barely any room, but he I mean he made a ton of those catches. That, you know, so you know some of my biggest memories is just being able to be on the field with Randy Moss and see what um, type of player he was and some of the spectacular things. I mean, there were times that we seen, you know, there were times where I seen him double and triple coverage and he run by guys for a seventy yard touchdown. So. You know, pretty impressive when you have the opportunity to play with one of the, you know, one of the most gifted wide receivers to ever play the game. That's for sure. And we saw him going to the Vikings Ring of Honor and the Vi- and obviously the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the past couple of years. So he's certainly uh, received his accolades for those seasons that he had when he was alongside you guys. Yeah, he's a good one. He was he was he was a hell of a player. All right, Jermaine, well, we really appreciate it and definitely uh, stay in touch with the Vikings organization down here and uh, we'll, we'll definitely be looking out for some of your content there, there with the uh, New England Patriots. All right, good luck. We'll talk to you soon. All right, take care, Jermaine. Yep, bye.